I'm Tammy Lee Meyer, and I'm joined today by Daniel Harris. Uh, Daniel Harris is the is the founder and uh, and uh, creator of of Kendra, Ken, the Kendra Hub, the Kendra Initiative. I'm going to let you share uh, a little bit about what Kendra is, Daniel. Uh, thank you. Hi, good to see you again. Um, yes, it's called many things. <laughs> Uh, Kendra Initiative started uh, in the late 90s uh, and we were looking at um, it was a research, research uh, project with a, a commercial company that I was working in at the time and a, a university and it was looking at better ways of harmonizing distribution of music at the time but it turned out it was just media it's just digital assets um, and ever since then, I've been pushing this, uh, this idea of, of um, harmonizing and, and standardizing and making services in, more inter interoperable so that they could, it's easy for users, uh, that's content creators, and for um, users, consumers, who want to get access to, to this content, to pay for it and to find it and all these kind of things, because what we have is kind of like islands of um, media, music, films, that, it, that you, you go to a website, you find um, the thing you want, and you pay for it, but you have to have an account with that website, and it's very fractured. The marketplace, as a, as a way of buying and selling content, it's a very fractured marketplace, and, it's, and it's, you, you need a lot of apps and you need a lot of different logins. And, and, and so the idea, one of the ideas was allowing a federated system where uh, shop fronts could sell content provided by everyone. So that the brand, the, 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 sort of the, the, the creator of the content was decoupled from the shop and vice versa. And that's what you have. I mean, that hasn't happened. It's what you have is like you have Amazon creating their own content, Netflix creating their own content. And, and, and that's their, a wonderful business model for themselves. But it, it also creates a factual marketplace. And I'm, I'm a realist, but I'm also an idealist. And um, I, in the mid-90s, I ran an ISP, an internet service, service provider, and I realized the beauty of the internet uh, was all about the fact that it was an open standard. So that's basically what I'm trying to create with, with, with Kendra, an open standard for media distribution. And crazily enough, uh, we got some funding in 2008, and we got some more in 2010, and we got some more. This, that was EU funding, and then we got some UK funding um, uh, a, few years, a few years later. And... Um, this is Kendra's a non-profit organization and we produce open source open architecture systems and we're giving it away for free and even more crazily after the brexit vote, vote <laughs> um, we won a competition uh, to get even more funding and so Kendra is part of a consortium of six other companies and uh, for the next three years, we're going to be fully funded uh, to create some awesome technology using also the blockchain. Okay. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm w what is known as technology agnostic. And I'm also a little bit skeptical of the hype around the blockchain. And so we're going to be doing some things on the blockchain, off the blockchain, and partially using the blockchain. <laughs> That's my mission, uh, is to experiment, because it's very new technology, but it's very exciting, and, and perhaps we can create smart contracts with or without the blockchain. Right. Um, so what we're doing is creating an application. This is the really exciting thing. So I think you've seen the Kendra Hub application that, that, that we've created before. It's kind of a, a way of visualizing songs on a timeline so that you actually can see who's playing what and when, 
So you, you can actually split the song up into uh, the drummer, the, the bassist, and all any other sample, or, or any other sample that you want to include. So you could have a song that just has 100 samples in it, and repeat it or not. And um, what we did with this application was enable you to identify within from within the song a total song um, the total split of who should be paid what based on an, a particular algorithm that's choosable by the owner of the song or the, or the person creating the song and making it very easy for then artists to be credited and also paid for that um, for the use of their content within a song. And also, we also created a system whereby you could take a sample of that song, put it into another song, and it would, everything contained within that sample would, would the rights would be transferred into the new song. And that's really exciting, because that's just what we want is for digital audio workstations, or Avid, or um, Final Cut Pro, to maintain ownership uh, details for every asset within within the um, uh, production. Fantastic. So can I just uh, recapitulate a little bit of that? Go for it. So uh, the Kendra Hub or the Kendra Initiative is really to uh, to go into a really uh, nestable way to manage digital rights. Yeah. So that. Uh, so that, and, and for me, that's really exciting in terms of this kind of media, collaborative video productions, yeah. Where, yeah. It, where it's also people's ideas, not just, yeah. uh, not just music and, and, and that sort of thing, yeah. where people's contributions can be tracked, agreements yeah. can be made, yeah. um, and the, this, this, uh, what you're creating uh, can help to, can be the mechanism that distributes the revenue that's generated by that media, as well as continue to draw those rights through as it's remixed into other applications. Exactly. Perfection. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, it, yes, and it can be total mashups of different media as well. That's important to say, but it could be text, it could be image, just still images that are, that are flown into. Um, video and with audio under you know songs underneath or it could be other ways you know like if this song video it, it's so there's lots of different ways of of making of of joining it all together and it's it's basically just digital content uh digital media and it's 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 a very and beyond that there's no reason why it can't go into 3d space and so we're very interested in working as you know with with other um organizations that are looking at uh, objects and actually there's scope so there's scope for creating something a uh, kind of a standard that is beyond just the media industry that goes into just work you know and, and, and in, a, in a sense that's what the blockchain and ethereum especially is is, is trying to do with 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 its system and um, I guess in a way what what we're doing with Kendra hub is creating uh, a way of visualizing smart contracts the media yes. and then also interrogating so so create so sorry in creating smart contracts so so actually having a visual interface for doing that and then um visualizing other people's smart contracts yes and what might that look like well um it as i said it could be this timeline for a track yeah or, or i suppose if it's if it's a time-based piece of work then it will be a timeline. If not, then it's just going to be a pie chart. Right. Um, and also, we're interested in doing it in 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 building tools to enable people to request um, usage of media within their creation, and also then also for artists to um, be able to negotiate rights between themselves after they've created something. Yes. You know? So actually to make it easier because at the moment they have to all get in a room or do it by email and it can be quite antagonistic sometimes when you're negotiating rights. So to, to make it simpler for, for people to do that would be cool. Yes. And I guess some baselines, you know, there are already baselines on how people share ownership of collective yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah. making that process easier yeah. and a little mm. bit more plug and play would be exactly. really useful. Yeah. But talking of plug and play, the next really exciting evolution of this, now that we are funded for three years, is that we're going to engage industry um, in a way that we haven't done before. What we've basically got is we, what we've built so far is this model that with the algorithm enables all of this to happen. So the technology is robust and it works. Yes. What we're now going to do is make it relevant. So we're going to be building an app that plugs into existing services, existing systems. So right now I'm just trying to get my head around what, because the app is both going to be hosted just much like Slack. It's going to be a, a web um, service, but it's also going to be an app that you can download and run offline. And, and that's quite exciting. I mean, what, I'm, what, what we're doing is, is um, building a lot of my different dreams. I've always wanted an offline app that could sync with an online system and act in a peer-to-peer -peer way. So it's very much it's about bringing, well, my phrase is user-centric computing to people so that they so that the dashboards for all of these different online services do you remember lawnmower man do you remember did you, did you ever see that film I oh, you think I have. It. it has it has 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 an aspect of this the, the basically the whole all of all of your digital world is brought to you rather than you having to log into lots of different websites you can get the app to log into those websites for you and the really interesting thing here is if you if you want sales data from, say, 10 different websites like Spotify or SoundCloud or, or Bandcamp or whatever, you bring in that, that sales data, um, then um, you, you just, you, generally, you just have a bunch of Excel spreadsheets. But if you've got a, an app doing that for you, it can normalize that data. It can say, um, well, we can actually bring it all into one system and then visualize it in, in, in one, in, in the same kind of graphing service. So, so uh, that's, an, that's the difference between having an app do this for you and you doing it yourself. So you're going to be able to get a lot more power from the kind of intelligence behind what, what we essentially be doing is mapping so we're mapping on the way out and we're mapping on the way in. So it, it looks like one system to you, whereas actually it'll be, be a, a kind of a, a conglomeration of all the systems that you use. And also it will enable experimentation a lot more. So, so the invitation to music services and video services um, is to say you will get much more, you'll get access to a lot more uh, users if you build a plugin for for this system yes or, or have us build a plugin and and again the this, the app is going to be free it's going to be open source it's not owning any clients so it's it's a big it's a big plus for service providers to get on board it's 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 non contentious you know it's it's it doesn't it's not about taking stealing their their users in any way so that's it's um are. And, and I wouldn't be having this conversation if I wasn't funded. So it's kind of, I'd be doing something else, you know, but it's just a miracle that we got the funding and now we can do this. So, yeah. So uh, just, I want to get a little bit into the nuts and bolts mm. of the technology. Yeah. So Great. in terms of, so there is the bringing together of the different, uh, the different services and, and client clients in terms yeah. of management. Yeah. And rights management. So that looks like yeah. record companies, what does that look? Who's that? Yeah. Um, for example, I, I think the, the app would be used by either a, um, a single artist or a band or a manager or a record label um, to manage their assets. And um, so, so, for example, taking the extreme of that, the, the, ba the record label, they would have multiple bands and multiple songs in each, you know, owned by each band, mm -hmm. um, assigned to each band. And um, so much like if you, if you were, uh, you could, you, the, the, I'm using rap music as the example, but it's, you know, it's, it's any digital asset. It could be a, it could be a film, like a, 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 an image library as well. Yeah. So um, what you, 
So that's on that side, it's, that's the user side, but then plugging into all of the different services and it will enable those users to plug into different um, services. So it depends, if, if, a, if a record label is actually providing digital services as well, then they'd be on both sides of, of, of the interface. Right. So, so we're, we're going out there looking for people that are that already, looking for companies that already have APIs and obviously SoundCloud does and Bandcamp does, and we can plug, very easily plug into them. So yeah, right now I'm, I'm trying to specify what infrastructure, what, what languages, what, what systems we should build this all on, and then proposing that to the companies that we're gonna be working with. Because interestingly enough, there are a number of companies out there who want to do this as well. And that's kind of like, well, are they competitors? Well, no, because it, I've been having this conversation with a, with a few companies, small companies, but they have big ideas and they want to get reach into distributors and into um, uh, um, okay. rights organizations all around the world. And the great thing is a lot of them have the contacts, whereas we don't necessarily have a, a lot of industry contacts, but they don't necessarily, I mean, to build this kind of technology and maintain it is a lot of work. But if we do it collaboratively uh, and build libraries that are open source and collaborative, then we can maintain uh, API clients for a particular service. I mean, the classic one is Facebook. You know, when Facebook changed their API, everyone has to go and update their clients that they're using. But if, if we have, if we share the client code base, then we save a lot of time and we, a lot of energy and a lot of, a lot of money. So this is really about saving money <laughs> and, and also maximizing reach. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really exciting that to go to, to companies with that prospect now. Um, of course, we're going we're gonna to come up against companies who monetize uh, selling API clients, but those, those are less than we would think, actually. And, 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 and also, companies do spend a lot of time maintaining their own code bases. And again, it will just be, well, uh, at one point, they'll, they'll say, well, let's not do this ourselves. Let's, let's, let's use this open source library. So, so, so yeah. what is built now? What is built now? Yes. The, the, what is built now by Kendra is the algorithm for, for the rights nesting. And, and, and that was, that was, a, that was, that hasn't been done by anyone else that I've seen. And, and that's amazing that it's unique because actually it's not used in industry at the moment. It's, um, it's, it's way too far ahead <laughs> and that's okay. Um, they, they will use it because it's the logical extension of what's happening now. Yes. Um, what has been built that Kendra hasn't built been built is um, the many of the uh, API clients has have already been built so and they're already open source so we can fork them or take them and build on top of those so so it's um, yeah it's uh, we're, we're in a very interesting space when when we've we've done a lot of the hard work in terms of the rights nesting and now we just need to make it usable for for people uh by by plugging them into <laughs> plugging them into hello <laughs> uh, you've gone mute sorry about that that's my friend who's just returned from the air Port, she's supposed to be boarding a plane in 20 minutes, but apparently oh. it not be. Oh, shame. Where did she want to go? Montreal. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, Montreal. <laughs> shame. So, mm. uh, that's, it's great to know exactly where in the flow uh, the yeah. work is. So yeah. now in terms of, so there's, there's Kendra, the one nonprofit with six companies. Yeah. So who are those companies and what are the, where are the points of intersection and the collaboration that's in that group? Okay, so one is a music company. One is a web TV broadcaster. Uh, uh, 
one is a um, very the I think the largest uh, public broadcaster in Germany. One is Atos, which is a huge um, consultancy firm, you know, tech consultancy firm. I mean, they do the Olympics. They 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 they're huge. You know, that that we are we have the department that deals with all the online uh, all the um credit card payments mm -hmm. which is yeah you know, for europe basically <laughs> okay. so and they have an interest in, in getting into blockchain payments so mm -hmm. so that hence hence yeah we've got some we've got a good team um who else is involved uh, a greek university and in Athens and uh, yeah another another tech company in Athens that, that specializes in um, kind of integration and technology and stuff so yes it's, I, I'm excited actually it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good team and um, yeah yeah uh, I think I think there'll be a some good output. I, I, basically, I'm, I'm making it my task to make sure that we are outputting good stuff from day one, although that may not be the way that EU always likes it to be done. They kind of like to have it like a year in and then, you know, two years in. But I, I want us to be, I want us to be, because my remit, remit is to engage with industry, I want us to be building relevant software from pretty much day month one, you know, so that, yes. that we can actually start to engage with people and say, how is this? Otherwise, I, in previous projects, I've, we've had it very difficult to actually engage with people to actually use our stuff that we were creating, even though it was pretty awesome. And that's pretty much because it just wasn't plugging into what they currently do. And that's, that's, that's again, why it plugging into uh, existing systems and providing sort of like incrementally relevant incrementally increased functionality yes. is, is going to be so so for example one one thing that we will do is you know plug in your song and we will upload it to soundcloud bandcamp and itunes all in one one button press yes. that's that's the idea is that we'll make it easier so that's that will be stage one it, it doesn't do much but it will be useful so hopefully we'll get people downloading it it'll be very simple but, and then we'll just add functionality iteratively. And so this is kind of, um, this kind of process that we'll, we'll, we'll work under, but, but just so we engage. One of the things that I'm most excited about this is that it feels like a direct currency. It's got some properties of a direct currency in terms of- How do you mean? There's an asset that has smart contracts attached to it that yeah. creating value according to views and that currency of attention yeah. and that, yeah. that, and that, that uh, revenue that's generated can be immediately uh, yeah. dispersed to the yeah. people in. So yeah. in a sense, the system itself is a currency creation process. It, oh or Lord. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, th th what's interesting about that is we will plug into any blockchain. We will plug into any cryptocurrency. No, rephrase that. We'll plug into all blockchains. We'll plug into all cryptocurrencies. We'll plug into every darn one of them. And this is, that's an interesting, fun, fun thing to be involved in. So it's, it's not just Ethereum. It's, it's, it's audio coin. It's, 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 and, and, and the rest. And, and what, what, what's exciting about that is, Again, I mean, that's been one of my questions around the blockchain technology is how interoperable is it? And I think you interoperate through exchanges, but then you're setting up, but why can't the user choose? So the user being the consumer and also the user being the content creator. So if they can um, have a uh, choice, of like, yeah, I'm going to sell this using this one, this one, and this one, and and these current and these other traditional currencies, or, or barter, or whatever. You know, then things become very fluid. Yeah. And um, so, so yeah, we're, we're stepping out of the way. We're just going to be routing, routing um, information and 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 payment. We're we're not. And that's that's exciting as well. I, I I just love 
love enabling everyone to connect yes even the people that don't want to connect you know like the <laughs> just putting a plug into them and letting someone else connect to them it's, it's very exciting because it's i'm just about I'm building bridges and breaking down walls yes. and that's really exciting and it's also a bit confrontational because um and maybe that's my antagonistic mode coming out well yeah. you're confronting the uh protectionist mentality that yeah. is our is a challenge in our in our economic system so you're, yeah rather yeah. than fighting that you're creating something yeah. uh, more workable and sure. that actually sure. serves us so i'm excited sure. Yeah, yeah, really excited. So I've got basically till September to chill out, get a few massages, have a few saunas, and um, basically do the preliminaries of what what we need to build. Um, yeah, and luckily it's it's kind of it's 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 spread over three years, so we've we've got a good amount of time, and things may change massively in that period as well. And that's why I say we'll build it on the blockchain. We'll build it totally off the blockchain and partially on the blockchain. You know, partly you plugging into the blockchain. So it it will will have some risk mitigation just if everything just fails to to happen. Uh, and also, there's other really exciting. I don't know if you're aware of like Big Chain DB and the interplanetary database. It's 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 using block databases traditional databases, well, if you call them that, with blockchain-like technologies. And that means there's, it's much more scalable and much faster. Each transaction is much faster. So, um, so we're, we're looking at that kind of thing as well, where, um, yeah, it's hybrids. You know, and so, so everything can change, you know. So is that, is that sort of internodal authentication and then the authentication happens within the databases themselves or what? Um, I'm not entirely sure what exactly you mean there, but, um, and I haven't gone into the technology massively. Okay. I don't believe it's a strict centralized database. I think there is some distributedness about it. Okay. Uh, and cause you can get that with, there's, there's like, before the blockchain, there was you know, distributed database technologies as well. So, um, yeah. Have, so, you, have, you been, have you been much in touch with Arthur Brock and have considered the sort of semantic tree structure of Scepter? Not recently, but definitely it's, it's on my target and I want to re-engage re with those guys and, and the would, whole. I would love to be a part of that conversation. Sure. And and maybe sure. host something together. Yeah, that's fine. Great, great, great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, I'll just let you do the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. Let's let's have that in a in a few weeks or something like that. And, and great. If, if he's up for it, I'm totally up for it. I guess the thing about it is, like I said, I wouldn't be having this conversation if we didn't have the money. And the money is a huge resource. And I really want to kick on so much of this stuff that I've been involved in, and you've been involved in for the last few years. That that just people really trying to make a difference and now now i think we have what i want to do right now is i want to get i want to get agreement on a platform yeah so come september i want to go to that first meeting i want to say this is what we need to build because i've got a hundred companies and people who are experts in this field saying this is what we should do so that's what i'm trying to get so i'm proposing you know like a uh um a the JavaScript kind of stack because that's like, like, like where we can build one code base that could be a website and a, and an application as well, and it's all cross, it's cross um, operating system and uh, yeah, so, so so something that's very easy for people to build and it and it is it works on multiple systems as well and platforms and devices so. And, and that's only become mature, I suppose, in the last year, maybe, you know, that people have actually started to use that in a big way. One script to serve them all. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's going to be really exciting because I want to engage with people that have been doing very, very uh, deep, thoughtful technology like, like Arthur and, and also the... Um, oh, Matthew Slater. Oh. Hmm? That's Matt Slater's Matt, at, Matt and um, Bob and Linda. Is it Linda? Uh, no, Lynn. 
Lynn, Bob and Lynn as well. So yeah, so, and, and also, also the whole Sensorica guys. So yeah, just really want to make sure we're aligned because there's opportunity here for something much bigger than, than, than just media even. So yes, yeah, yes. yeah. And that, that, you know, I love that you've really held down that piece of interoperability. Yeah. Because that, yeah. that is where we connect, is the need to mm. connect. Yeah. It needs to yeah. work together. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So in terms of what I would love, um, perhaps not at another time, is to really uh, do a bit more of a deep dive into uh, the usability from the perspective of, media, of collaborative media assets yeah. and intellectual value creation. Yeah in yeah. this sort of way um, yeah. so that we can we can think your think into how that might work uh, yeah. in terms of really drilling that down uh, yeah. that would be incredibly useful for me uh, so I'd love cool. to do another session that's really just focused on on what that would look like and getting into the nuts and bolts Groovy. Yeah. awesomeness so what's next is some massages and some brainstorming and some letting it all drop before it, before it all takes off in September. No, it happens concurrently. Um, I need, uh, basically I'm what the reason I say I need, need some massages because I know that if, if I physically am, well, I'm, I'm quite tense at the moment. So if I'm physically not, not together, this is not going to be a good ride. So I really need to take care of myself. Yeah. Even more when I'm in, 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 you know, over the three years, I'm going to really need to take care of myself a lot more than I have been now. And I take care of myself a lot. So it's just interesting when I thought of that, the balance that I'll need is I'm going to have to be even more rigorous about yoga, you know? <laughs> yes. yes. Do some more breathing. Which, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Which is good. You know, it's, it's going to be good for me. Um, you know, cause it's all going to be head heady stuff. You know? Yes. Well, thank you so much for taking this time. Uh, and I, I, I feel like we did get a good, a good take on, yeah. on how it was expressed. So I'm excited about that. And oh. I'm looking forward to the next thing we do together. Me too. And like, yeah, like uh, jump on board, you know. Uh, I, I know. I know where your heart is and I know what, you know, what you want to do. So like really, I, I, it, it's a vehicle, you know. It's a vehicle for for you to take advantage of and and um, make it your own as well. Like I say, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to just get a bit of, I'm trying to do lots of things in terms of getting the company together and, and, and you know, so I'm, I'm kind of doing a bit of, but yeah, outreach is, is going to be huge. And, um, and I also, ah, from day one, I want to be fundraising. Okay. So this is not, oh, let's get like 600 K and then let's spend it. And then, scratch our heads at the end of three years no i want to be fundraising from day one to have loads and loads of sort of um kind of ancillary projects um who knows you know who who knows what might come along maybe the current project will be an ancillary project something bigger so so there's an opportunity here with the kind of like the, the foundation and the kudos that we have from getting this funding yes. which is the most funding i've ever had actually in in terms of um the previous ones were were uh were around the sort of 70k a year whereas this one is like yeah 200 odd a year which is so so it's good but um yeah fundraising um you know there's all manner of things that might happen we may move to europe we may set up um foundations in the us and and you know who, who knows it's it, if that makes fundraising easier but i want to go massively for it because right. At the end of the three years or during that three years, I want to have loads of other projects. So I, I'm kind of saying that to you, if, if you're kind of like thinking, uh, how do you align or what, yes. what, what, yes. where you put your effort, you know, yes. um, and, and, I, and I'm telling this to people and saying, well, listen, yes, but then be a part of it and then pay yourself, you know. So um, it is a vehicle. And it, that, uh, I, I, obviously, as we go on with we, we will have to define more about what is it, it is doing. And there's also obviously a lot of work to, to define that anyway, but yes. um, yeah, man. That's exciting. I mean, and I've done I fundraising. I'm excited about outreach. Yeah. I'm especially excited about yeah. and, and using this kind of process to shed light on what yeah. people are doing. Yeah. Is yeah. Also and I'm up for working with you, you know, I, I, I like your, I like your style and, and, 
and yeah, yeah, do a lot of it. I like your style too. Yeah, man. <laughs> Thank you so much, Daniel. We'll do a little checkout after this. Okay, cool, Leo. Ciao, ciao.